very briefly, we'll talk about tree sort, but we haven't really discussed sorting yet, so I'll just say for later, and then general trees. That's a very high level overview. There's some, a lot more details that we want to cover. But first, um, an array based representation. So I'll show you what this node structure looks like to see if this list works. Yep, great. So this is the tree node class. Do you need it bigger? A couple steps up. Is that better? Mm -hmm. OK, so I have tree node. Um, whatever type of data I've got in my node, let's say it's integers or strings or whatever. And then I have left child and right child. And these are integers because these are indexes into an array. So it's an array-based implementation. Each tree node looks like this. In a link-based implementation, um, I don't know if I have a slide for this one, but in a link-based implementation, these wouldn't be integers, these would be pointers to tree nodes. Okay, yeah, there we go. So the next one down here is, I have a binary node, and it's my item type again, and then it is a left child pointer, right child pointer my left and right child to the same thing. Okay? So what we do in an array-based representation, this is the tree we're looking at. Um, uh, it's our normal name tree. It's just missing Wendy over there. Um, in my array, I have the item so it's, it's like a multi-dimensional array here. I have the item, then I have the index for the left child, the index for the right child, then I said multi-dimensional array, but I should have said these are just the structs that we talked about. So um, if you're gonna say multi-dimensional array, it's easier to think of the structs. So I have my item, then my left child index, right child index, and so remember that on the left of Jane is Bob, so left child index of one, row one is Bob. And on the right side of Jane was Tom, so right child, Tom. Okay. I have to have two extra variables to keep track of things. One is my root, and one is my free pointer. So the root tells me which index is the root of the tree, because any of them could be. You would think, well, zero should always be the root. OK, great. What if I remove it? What if I remove Jane from the tree? Jane's not zero anymore. Is it, I don't want to have to reshuffle the whole array, because if I just shift everything up, does that fix it? No. So it's possible that the root moves somewhere else as I am manipulating my tree. So I have to keep track of the root. Free tells me where the next spot in the um, list here where I can put another element. I can't just use the size or the number of elements because again, I might remove stuff in the middle. Now, if I remove stuff, I can't just shift everything up because all my indices over here might have to be adjusted then. And that would be very messy, actually. Yeah? I'll just put a question about um, why those were No, nope. negative one means not. There's no child. Okay. Zero is an actual value, so yeah. Yeah, zero is the root. So if I put zero here, that would mean well, in this case, the root. Zero is actually another node. So if I had zeros here, that would mean I was pointing back to that. So minus one is the default, which means that there's nothing. Right. Um, I forgot about this. Um, the free list. If I delete stuff in the middle. I can't shift things up into it, right? No. But I want to keep track that that node is free so that I can use it again. Otherwise, my table is going to get filled full, it could be Swiss cheese, and I run out of space in my table when there's really lots of gaps. So, six points to this free, which is actually the start, it's the first free one down here, but it's the start of this free list. And these are the nodes that are available to be used. 
So if I was to remove Tom, let's assume that I can do that. If I remove Tom, then node 2 now becomes free, and so that would get added to my free list. So then, if we remove Tom, we would have item blank, left child blank. Right child would be 6? No, right child would be blank 2. I mean, if we remove Tom, then this row just kind of goes away. Yeah, but the right child is always pointing to the next node in the free list. Well, down there it is. Down here it is. But no, not necessarily. I don't think it would. Um, you got two choices. How One. do you know where the rest of the free list is? It's contiguous. It starts at free and everything below here. I say you have two choices. You can do it his way and have Bob point towards six, or you can do it another way by moving Nancy into the blank spot and just making five uh, free. Kind of. <laughs> yes, we, we, we can kind of do that. So um, it turns out that no one really does it this way. This is kind of a theoretical approach. Um, part of the reason is you start to see that it's complicated. You're just trying to remove these nodes out the middle, you have know, stuff you have to really keep track of. And there are better ways to do this um, for a tree. Um, but I, for what you're talking about, maybe you would have to have that as six, but I don't think so. I would have to go read up on this a little bit more to find out for sure. I don't think so. You would just add two to the list here. It depends. And if someone wanted to use that, when you wanted to insert another thing at that node, you would just use that. It depends on how you're tracking the free list. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm still not understanding how you would find free nodes if you're removing one. So, this is node number two, right? And this is my free list. And so it starts at six, and I'm just gonna seven, eight, nine, and I could add a node. I could add two to the end of this list as a free node. And then when I need to use a node, it would actually the next insert would, would happen here, and then I would move the free pointer down to here. And eventually, I would, my free would be down here, and it would say the node you can use is two. So I'd end 